a very important state. You win Michigan, you win the election. You win Michigan, you're going to win the election. And uh, so we'll be back. First up tonight, former President Trump is now on his way to Wisconsin after speaking in Grand Rapids a few hours ago. Trump spoke about immigration, the auto industry, and the recent murder of Ruby Garcia. We continue our team coverage tonight. Let's begin with News 8 political reporter Rick Albin, who got to speak with former President Trump. Rick, how did he expand on his message of immigration? Well, the former president's trip stemmed, as you said, from the murder of Ruby Garcia at the hands of what authorities say was a person in the country illegally. But that happened in Kent County about a week and a half ago. The bulk of his speech was criticizing illegal immigration under the Biden administration. Shortly before he boarded his plane for that next event in Green Bay that you just saw, I wanted to know if he could fix that problem and create a robust legal immigration system that the country needs. You talked a lot about the border today, and let me ask you this question. In 2015, you came down the escalator on day one. You started talking about illegal um, immigration into this um, country. Now, almost nine years later, it's one of the top two or three issues for American voters. At the same time, there are business groups, chambers, agriculture who need legal immigration right. to keep this country going. Right. Can you, at the same time, take care of an issue that you have been passionate about and people are saying, and be able to bring in legal uh, immigration, which is not just about business, but it's part of who we are as Americans. Absolutely. We want people, Rick, to come in, but we want them to come in legally. They have to come in legally. Right now, we have an invasion, and they're coming right now, as you know, from prisons, from mental institutions. They're terrorists. We have people coming in the likes of which we've never seen in this country before. They're coming in at levels that we've never seen, and many, many criminals, bad, hardened criminals, and we're going to get them out. No, I want people to come into our country, and you mentioned agriculture, that's right, and there's nobody that took better care of the farmers or the manufacturers than I did, but we're going to let them come in. We're going to let them come in legally. We have to have a process. But we've been invaded by uh, many people that should not be in our country, and we have to do something about it because no, it is not sustainable by any country. Now, as you saw there, former President Trump is focusing on issues in swing states. Two today, Michigan and now on uh, to Wisconsin. The numbers are tight and getting tighter and seven months to go before the election. So these kind of uh, stops and much larger, the regular rallies like what we normally see, expect to see a lot of that in the summer and fall and expect the rhetoric on both sides to get turned up. I think it's going to be a pretty loud election cycle. I think it will. So it was a brief stop you know, on his way over to Wisconsin. Do you think today's stop had the impact that he was hoping for? I, I don't know what they were hoping for, and it's hard to get a flash view of the impact, but mm -hmm. I can tell you it was a media-made event, and that room was packed with every network that you would think about and some that you wouldn't every local from around the state. Um, and so it did get a lot of attention, but I think as important as anything for him, uh, he wants to make his presence known in Michigan. He said something that is probably politically pretty much on, on the mark. If you win Michigan, you probably win the presidency. Now that's not a given, but I think it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see a lot more of both candidates. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Rick. Now Ruby's loved ones and community are left grieving for this incredible young woman, remembering what they called her. They said she had just this most contagious laughter, and when she walked into a room, she lit up that room. And I've heard that from so many people. I spoke to some of her family. One of the talking points of President Trump's speech was the deadly shooting of Ruby Garcia. Brandon Ortiz Vite admitted to killing Garcia and dumping her body along US 131 in Grand Rapids. Trump said he spoke with her family, but Target 8 investigator Ken Colker spoke with Ruby Garcia's sister, the family spokesperson who says that never happened. Ken, what did she have to say? Ruby Garcia's sister says she's angry that her sister's death has become political. It's always been about illegal immigrants. Um, nobody really speaks about when Americans do heinous crimes. And it's um, kind of shocking why he would just bring up illegals. What about Americans who do heinous crimes like this? The sister, Mavi Garcia, spoke with the media days after the March 22nd shooting, but the family asked for privacy after that, including on the day of the funeral but she responded immediately to a text from Target 8 after Trump's speech. Now Ruby's loved ones and community are left grieving for this incredible young woman, remembering what they 
called her. They said she had just this most contagious laughter. And she says neither Trump nor anybody from his campaign has contacted her or anybody in her immediate family. She says her family is tight, and she would know if that had happened. He did not speak with any of us, so it was um, kind of shocking seeing that he had said that he had spoke with us and, you know, um, saying, well, misinforming people um, live TV. Shocking. You know, I kind of stopped watching it. I, I only seen up to that uh, after I heard, um, you know, a couple of um, misinformation that he had said. I kind of just stopped watching it. Brandon Ortiz Vite, who was in the U.S. illegally, has confessed to killing her sister and dumping her along U.S. 131. While police say the two were boyfriend-girlfriend, Ruby's sister says the two were friends and that the relationship had not gotten that far. She says she knew that Ortiz Vite was in the U.S. illegally, but did not know the details. I wish she would have stayed in Mexico. The focus should be on my sister right now, on really, like, um, who she was in life. I want people to remember how she was in life. She was a very happy person, a very generous person. She was always so happy, you know, could light up a, a room. Now, Trump did get that part right, right? Yes, he did get one part right. <laughs> Ortiz Vite is scheduled to appear next in court on April 9th. He's facing five charges, including felony murder and carjacking. All right, thanks, Ken. And ahead of Donald Trump's visit to Grand Rapids, state Democrats held their own virtual press conference. Among those in attendance, U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow and Senate Majority Leader Winnie Brinks. They argue Donald Trump is creating division across the nation. And I want to be clear, there are very real security concerns at the border. And on February 7th of this year, Senate Republicans had a chance to vote for a tough, effective, bipartisan bill to address those challenges. 55 days later, 55 days later, we're still waiting for that bill to pass. 55 days ago, Republicans killed the bill. And we know why. It was very clear, and Donald Trump admitted it. He told them to stop the bill. Donald Trump is always about division instead of unity. He's about creating chaos instead of offering solutions and exploiting others for his own personal and political gain. Brinks also added that members of the Democratic Party have been in touch with Ruby Garcia's family. They say her family has requested privacy at this time. Ahead of Trump's visit today, supporters and protesters gathered in downtown Grand Rapids. News 8's Megan Bunchman is live outside of DeVos Place with more from today's visit. Megan? It may be a cold, wet West Michigan day, but that did not keep the pro-Trump supporters away. In fact, it looks quiet now, but earlier today, about two hours ago, maybe three, there were dozens of Michigan State Police cruisers and other security vehicles lining the streets, escorting President Trump's motorcade into downtown. And you saw a couple of hundred other pro-Trump supporters lining the street of Monroe in line at that time. Now. Trump's speech to local media and invited guests focused on immigration policy mainly. 25-year-old Ruby Garcia again. She was killed last month by her boyfriend, Brandon Ortiz Vite, who was an undocumented immigrant. Opponents of Trump's visit said earlier today that he is simply politicizing a tragedy. We were immigrants at one point, and some of us were refugees, I assume, at one point. And at that time, the United States was open to having people come. Now they aren't so much, so uh, we'd like to go back to the way it was.